Today, I'm gonna to talk about how you can streamline validation of your arguments that are passed into any method by using the guard method inside of the .NET Community Toolkit. It makes it crazy simple to get rid of all of those if conditional checks and manually throwing of exceptions by using a simple helper method called guard. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James, and today I'm back talking about the .NET Community Toolkit. In a previous video, I talked about the MVVM library, uh, which is part of the .NET Community Toolkit that helps you do source generation of code when it comes to MVVM, and also provides a bunch of different helper methods and properties to really just make MVVM awesome. I'll put a link to the video up there. It's probably one of my favorite videos of all time that I've ever made. It's really, really cool, and all the feedback on it was really fantastic. Now today, I'm gonna talk about some other parts of the .NET Community Toolkit and all the things that are in this Community Toolkit too, because there's a lot of Community Toolkits. And I actually had Sergio on, on .NET recently talking about the lineage and history and where it's going and how you can get involved. So definitely check out the .NET YouTube over at youtube.com slash .NET. Let's talk about guarding, all right? Let's talk about actually handling errors and different things that are passed into your methods. Normally, what we need to do is validate to make sure that we get the correct input. Often, this means that we're checking against null, but it may also mean we want to check against like specific lengths or seeing if integers are above or below a certain size or like an index uh, of an array that we're trying to query on is valid. Like, is it in the range? Uh, of course, you know, just checking against empty strings is also another one too. If you've ever written any C sharp code or any code in general, you have a bunch of if statements. You say, if this thing is this thing, then throw an exception. If this thing is this thing, then throw this thing. Guarding sort of flips the script onto its head and says, let's guard our method and let's define the valid state. And if it passes each of these validation methods, continue on, else throw an exception. So for example, where we would manually check to see if something is null and throw an argument null exception, we would say, if it is not null, then continue, right? So it's kind of the inverse thinking of it, which is really, really neat. And the guard helper inside of the .NET Community Library helps you do this. So let's check it out. So I'm over here inside of my MVVM source generator code that I ran a billion times. Uh, and pretty much what I've done is I've created this method called submit info. This is directly from the sample with a few modifications um, from the .NET community toolkit. Um, but I kind of, it's a great example, right? Cause it submits information. It takes in an integer array. It has an index that you probably want to index on and then a string property as well. And this is what probably a lot of people's codes look like. We have array, if it's null, throw a null exception. If it's greater than or equal to 10, throw an argument exception. If it's not inside of the index range, throw an argument out of range exception. If the string is null or empty, or maybe even is white space, throw an exception, right? Oh my goodness. You got to write all this code and it kind of chains up over and over again. Now there are some really nice helpers, specifically the bang bang operator coming in C sharp 11 that enable you to do something like this, which actually allows you to just put these little two uh, bangs right behind it. And that will say, if this thing is null, throw an argument null exception. Now that's great, but it's not gonna handle every scenario for you um, because it's not checking against these other things. And that's where guard comes in. So what we wanna do is go over to NuGet and we wanna type in community toolkit. Now there are a lot of community toolkits and specifically I'm doing the include pre-release here. Um, but there's a lot of them in here. And the community toolkit is a GitHub a repository over here, which, uh, and, and actually organization. So if I bring this up over here, it's a bunch of different community toolkits like .NET, the Windows community toolkit, the .NET MAUI one, it has all sorts of stuff inside of here. So you definitely wanna pay attention to this thing. But what I wanna show over here is that I'm gonna not only install the MVVM one, which we did previously, I'm gonna come down to this one communitytoolkit.diagnostics. And specifically, I'm installing the latest 8.0 version that's in preview right now. So I'm gonna check this and install it. 
Now this happens to be a .NET MAUI application, but this can be any application. It doesn't matter what version of .NET you're targeting. It could be framework, it could be .NET standard, it could be Xamarin, it could be UWP, it could be .NET MAUI, anything, it doesn't matter. Now that we have it installed, let's come up and add another community uh, directive here. So we'll say using community toolkit.diagnostics. And that's the namespace that gives me everything I need. Now inside of here, if we go down here, there's, there's two things. If I do community toolkit.diagnostics, there's a guard and a throw helper and a few other things in here too. Specifically, we want to look at guard and this is what's going to enable us to guard our method against invalid input. So if I say guard dot, I'm going to zoom in here and just show you some of the things that it can do. So for example, we want to check can it do something? Is it greater? Is it not null, right? What is the valid state that we want? So for example, here, we have some stream uh, methods such as can read, can see, can write. And if it can do that, it will continue. If it can't do that, it will throw an exception. We have other things like has size equal to, is greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, um, is assignable of type, is at start position, is between, is canceled, is closed, is completed. That's awesome on a task. Is completed successfully on a task. That's really, really cool. Um, is false, is faulted, is greater. What is the valid state? Look at all these helper methods. And this will automatically throw the correct exception for you under the hood automatically. And that code has been finely tuned and optimized, which is really, really cool. All right, so let's look at all these. So there's all these things. Is not of type, is white space, is not white space. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, so there's all sorts of stuff. So what do we wanna do here? Well, we wanna say, if this thing is null, then throw an exception. So what is the valid state of the array. Well, we can say guard dot is not null. All right. Now, full line IntelliSense here from Visual Studio 22 is telling me to fill an array and name of array automatically. And what this is saying is if this thing is not null, it's valid, continue on. But if it is null, throw an exception, right? Takes in a parameter and the specific name that you'd want to use in the exception. Now this thing is really, really smart. So you can actually just get rid of that. You don't even need to pass it in. It'll automatically figure that out for you, which is cool. So now we take these four lines of code and delete them. Boom. All right. How about array dot length greater than or equal to? Well, what's the valid state? The invalid state of it's 10 or greater. So the valid state should be is or has size less than, right? Because it needs to be less than 10. So here I can say array and 10, just like that. So is the size of this array less than 10? And if so, then it's valid. And we can go ahead and delete that. Awesome. Next one. Now this is actually checking if index is less than zero, but also if index is greater than or equal to the array dot length. So in this instance, like what is actually could do is we could do a guard and we could say guard dot is greater than, for example, we could say it's greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. But what we're actually doing is checking the range over here. It's between two values. So what we can say here is we can say guard dot is in range four. Like, is it in range of the index, right? That's the index. And over here, we can give it the array. All right. So this is saying, is the index in range of the array? Now you can do this on a bunch of different things. So here we can actually um, see that there's, um, there's a in range for a string, there's a collection, there's a read only collection, there's a list of T memory of T. So all sorts of things that you can pass in here, which is really nice. This will automatically take in that array and sure enough, boom, gone. All right. Now this last one, right? We're checking to see if the text is string is null or empty. And here I'm going to say guard is not null, or in this case, white space, right? <laughs> right. That's one that you can use. Or if you do want to do empty, also valid too. And here I'll just put in text. So it's up to you if you want is not null or white space or not null or empty. So whatever your method calls, here we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and call this thing. 
So now what I've done is I've created a little submit button and the very first time it comes in, it's going to pass in invalid state. So we're going to keep passing invalid state, get closer to validation to the very end. So what I'm going to do here is the first time is I'm going to pass in null for the array that should fail this check because it is null. So it's not going to work. The next one, I'm going to pass in a really long integer array, which is going to be over the amount of 10 that it needs. So it'll be invalid. Then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in five for the index, which is not going to be in the range for the array. Then I'll pass in one and give it a null for the string. And then finally, we should be good to go. All right, so let's just go ahead and debug this thing so we can actually verify this. So I'm actually going to add a breakpoint on that count equals five so you can really, really see it because we're expecting exceptions up until that point. So here's our application. All right, there we go. I'm just going to hit the submit ticket. Now, the very first time it comes in, it passes it null. So it says array must not be null. Boom, you're good to go. The parameter is array. It figured it out for us automatically. You can, of course, give it, you know, better message as well. And you can handle ex specific exceptions in your code too. But that is a nice little error message right there generated for us automatically. All right, next one. Here, we're going to go ahead and pass in size 11, right? So it needs to be less than 10 for the int array size handled automatically. Next one, what do you know? It's not in the range. It's very, very specific here, especially if you're creating a library, you want to give these exceptions to your developers. It literally is going to tell them everything they need to know, including the actual value here of everything that's inside of it. Next one over here, again, the null cannot be null, the string cannot be null or empty, and it was null on that parameter. And then finally, let's check it out. I'm going to submit the info. Let's actually walk into it as well and walk through. So there we go. Passed, 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 and it passed. And our application successfully is now up and running and working. And there you have it. That is how you can optimize and fine tune your code and delete all those if checks all over the place and use Guard, part of the .NET Community Toolkit Diagnostics Package. And there's tons more in there to help you write even more fine grain tune optimized code. Hope you did enjoy this video. I highly recommend you check out the Community Toolkit organization over on GitHub. Take a look at all the great Community Toolkit libraries and packages and bundles that are being partnered between Microsoft employees and the community. It's really cool to see those things come together. Big shout out to Sergio for coming on to the on.net show, talking about all this stuff and actually listening to me and, and, and taking some of my suggestions at heart and talking through stuff. It's fun to engage with the team on GitHub too. I'm really excited to start using these packages in my applications. And I hope that you find it you know, useful as well. If you do, let me know down in the comments below if this is something that you're interested in, or if you've uh, already been using something similar too. I'd love to know if there's other libraries out there that are even helping you optimize that validation as well. I'm gonna come back with even more samples from the Donna community toolkit, including actual validation of fields and properties and some more of the performance things that they have as well to go deep dive on all these. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did give it a thumbs up down there, if you made it this far, it really helps out the channel and this video and helps other people find it. And you can actually help them by sharing it. Just hit share, drop that in your teams and your Slack Just share it out on Twitter. I would really appreciate that. And if you're new here, I put out videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. So jam on that subscribe button over there and ring that notification bell so you get up to date whenever I put out new episodes. I'm James. I really appreciate you tuning in and thanks for watching.